So the theme of this month, which we haven't really specifically and overtly referred to, but have been covertly talking about it all month. Today, I want to overtly refer to it. The theme for this month is Be the Message. (laughs) Just what her song was about. And today, we're going to get to take a stand for some things. And I'll explain what that means in a moment. But the whole idea is, who are we in this world? And who do we want to be in this world? And what do we stand for in this world? And are we willing to be the message that we stand for? So I want to start, actually, with some very specific questions. Questions that I said to first service, you don't have to answer these. They're rhetorical, but they insisted on answering them anyway. So I'm not even going to tell you not to answer them, because you will. Go ahead and answer them if you want, out loud. It's fine. Or answer them in your heart. (laughs) So the first question is, do you think the world could use a big dose of our science of mind way of thinking and being about right now? Big time, big time, big time. Now, if you're new today or relatively new to these teachings, you may say, I don't, I can't answer that question because I don't know what the science of mind ways of thinking and and being are. So you and only you're off the hook for that question. Only you. But the rest of you, you're on the hook for that question. And everyone is on the hook for the rest of the questions, all right? But the first question, again, is, do you think that the world could use a big dose of our science of mind ways of being and thinking about right now? You've already said yes to that. Second is, do you think that if more and more and even more people live from a place of personal, unique empowerment coupled I love it. That is an interesting ringtone. There we go. Coupled, (laughs) I'm going to say that again. Do you believe that if more people live from a place of personal, unique empowerment, coupled with their realization of our oneness, exactly what Riley sang about, Riley sang about, do you believe if more people thought that, that our global, political, social, and economic landscape might look slightly different? (laughs) <laughs> like I heard, and of course, oh yeah. Do you think if everyone, everyone knew that they were spiritual beings having a human experience and that they lived from their creative nature, that we would experience more harmony, health, peace, and prosperity in the world? Yes. Mm-hmm. And do you think maybe, just maybe, love really is the answer to any question? Yes. <laughs> well, good. So apparently I'm going to be preaching to the choir a bit today, but that's okay. That's okay. Because I'm now going to ask you to make this personal. We, those, those are great questions in theory. You know, they're great concepts. And yeah, we say, yes, I align with those concepts. But now my question is, where do you stand in each of these areas? Now, when I ask where do you stand, please, 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 please know that we do not do guilt here. This is a guilt-free zone in here. You know, we don't do religious guilt. We don't have any kind of, you know, penance or any of that stuff going on here. You don't have to worry about any of that. But it is an opportunity today to say, where am I? And what am I standing for? And do I want to make a difference? And do I want to make a difference in where I stand? Do I want to stand taller, firmer, stronger, maybe in a different direction? I don't know. Today you'll get a chance to really think about that and prayerfully be with that. So I'm going to change those questions now and make them very personal. And they sound like this. If you said yes, which you did, to do you think the world could use a big dose of our science of mind ways of being and thinking right now, then where do you stand? in living every day these teachings. If you said yes to the idea that if more people live from a place of personal, unique empowerment, coupled with a realization that we really are all one, would there be a different global, political, social, economic climate in our world? If you said yes to that, then where do you stand in living from your personal, unique empowerment while you recognize that we are, in fact, all one. 
if you said yes to the idea that you believe we are all spiritual beings having a human experience and that if everyone thought that and if everyone knew that their creative nature and lived from it, we would have more harmony, health, peace, and prosperity. If you said yes to that, then where do you stand in creating harmony, health, peace, and prosperity in your own life? And if you said yes to the notion that maybe, just maybe, love really is the answer to any question, then where do you stand in love? So I have just taken those theoretical questions and made them extremely personal. (laughs) And you may be feeling a little bit right now like the little old lady in the country church where the minister was preaching some hell, fire, and damnation. And he was preaching about the many sins of the world. And he was preaching about the sins of liquor. And she, as he was preaching about the sins of liquor, she said, hallelujah, brother, preach it. And then he started preaching about the sins of lying and cheating. And she said, hallelujah, brother, preach it. And then he started preaching about the the sins of, well, all sorts of other worldly sins. And she said, preach it, brother, preach it. Then he started preaching against and railing against pipe smoking. She happened herself to be a pipe smoker. And at that point, she said, well, now he has stopped preaching and he has started meddling. (laughs) So perhaps, perhaps, just perhaps, this morning, you might be thinking I'm meddling. And to that, I say, yes, good, good. I want to meddle a little bit in our, in all of us, in all, I want to get in all of our business today, mine as well. I want us to get really clear today about taking a stand because I do believe that our world right now could use, could benefit from a big, big, big dose of what we teach and what we believe in science of mind. It could use a big, big, big dose of people who are empowered in their uniqueness and in their unique way and who know our oneness and our unity. I think the world could use a big, big dose of people who know that they're creative spiritual beings and are about creating a world that works for themselves and for others. And I think the world could use a big, big dose of the realization that what the world needs now is love, sweet love. Come on. <laughs> there we go. Oh, you have all just dated yourself right there. You have just put yourself firmly in the 60s right there. And those of you who were not raised in the 60s are going, what the heck are they talking about? Yeah, right, right. All right. You watch TV. Yeah. You listen to the radio, right? Your parents had the cool FM on. That is Jackie DeShannon's song in the 60s. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. So first, to, for today, this day, Sunday, April 23rd, 2017, which, by the way, happens to be a very, very, very special day in the life of Creative Living Fellowship. I will mention that in a moment, so just hold on to that. Just hold on to that. This day, today, we're going to individually and personally get to take a stand in those areas. But before we do, I want to have a little bit of a conversation, a little bit of a conversation about this idea of what does it mean and what does it feel like to take a stand for something. It really means being committed, doesn't it? It means saying, I am committed to this. I love the statement that says, if, if, you're, um, if, you, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. <laughs> I love that. I love it. But to stand for something means I have made a commitment to this. And whether or not the winds blow this way or that way, I'm committed to this. Whether or not I am afraid, I am committed to this. Whether or not I feel like it or not, I am committed to this. That's what taking a stand is. And that's not always the easiest thing. There was a swimmer uh, years ago who was a a world record holder. Probably her record has been broken since then, but she um, had the record, world record for the 1,500-meter uh, freestyle swim. Her name was Kim Linehan. Anyway, she was interviewed once about her regime and her training, and she spent hours and hours and hours and hours and hours exercising. She spent hours and hours and hours and hours and hours in the pool. And she was asked by a reporter, what is your most 
What is the hardest part, the most difficult part of your workout and your preparation regime that has allowed you to be a world-class, a world record holder in, in your field? What is the hardest thing about your regime? And you know what her answer was? <laughs> Getting in the water. Getting in the water. Saying, I'm committed to this, and whether I feel like it or not, whether I want to or not, I am getting in the water. <laughs> Burr, yeah. <laughs> if it had been me, it might have been getting up in the morning, because she probably did that really early, and I'm not a morning person. The, my, the hardest part of my workout routine, honestly, is getting up in the morning. But once you do it, you're on your way. That's commitment. That's commitment. Standing for something requires commitment. Have you ever had, however, this experience? That you say yes to something. You say, I am making a commitment to, and you fill in the blank, whatever it is. This morning, we're going to make a stand for some specific things. But we've all made commitments in our lives to something, right? Have, do I have anyone here who's so totally commitment phobic that you've never made a commitment to anything? Right, no. Nobody quite that bad. All right. But this is what can often happen, and it may have happened with you. We make a commitment, and then everything unlike what we have just committed to raises its precious little head. You ever have that? We make a commitment to love more, and then all this stuff comes up that we don't love. We make a commitment to eat better. And then you walk in work, and there's this, you know, donuts everywhere. (laughs) Right? You make a commitment to whatever, and then... The opposite shows up. So what is that about? The universe is out to get me to sabotage me. No, that is not it. What it is, is the higher part of you that knows that you have just made a conscious commitment to something. It also knows that you have an unconscious commitment to something else. Mm -hmm. The opposite. Uh Uh-huh. Because that's how you've been living. And so... The, the higher part of you says, I need to bring this up and out into your face, into your life, so you see it, and you can be aware of it, and you can deal with it. You can release it. You can pray about it. You can do whatever you need to do to let that go so that it doesn't run an unconscious program underneath the surface, which would then always be sabotaging your conscious commitment. Does that make sense? Yeah. So don't think you make this great commitment and then all this stuff happens that it's the universe out to get you. Or, gee, that wasn't a good commitment. I should have made that commitment. Mm -mm. It's simply the higher point part of you saying, we got to clean this out or you're not going to be able to stand in that commitment. And I want you to stand in that commitment because it's for the higher for your higher being to be there. And it's for the expansion of your soul and the expansion of humanity for you to stand in that commitment. So let's bring to light whatever might sabotage it. Put it in your face. Let you deal with it. Let you get support around it so you can let it go. How many have seen, and I won't tell too much about this because I don't want to ruin the movie if you haven't seen it, but how many of you have seen the movie The La 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 Land? It was up for an Oscar yeah, okay. La La Land? La La Land? Okay, so most of this side has and fewer on this side have seen. Okay, this is the La La Land side, apparently. Right. There's a few of you over here, but not as many. La La Land, great movie, won a bunch of Oscars. Emma Stone won an Oscar for her role as leading uh, lead, lead actress. And it's, if you like musicals, and it's kind of a 40s style musical, uh, it's got a great little message about dreams and aspirations and sticking to what you're committed to. And I won't go into details of it because I don't want to blow the story, but a tiny detail is that Emma Stone's character isn't trying to be an actress. She wants to be an actress. It's, that's what her heart's calling is to be an actress, and she's been in Hollywood six years and has not been successful. She gives it one last try because a friend of hers is totally supportive. He's behind her, 100% behind her. He believes in her. And she wants to write a one-woman play and star in it. And he supports her in doing that. And she does it. And it's a big old fat flop, she thinks. And she gives it up. And she moves home to wherever she lives, Iowa or somewhere. And she gives up. And it's her friend who helps her. Actually, he drags her back to Hollywood so that she can live her dream. Because it's just right there. And it's her friend that calls her back into that. We need others sometimes to help call us back into the dream, 
into the commitment to help hold us accountable when we don't want to be accountable, (laughs) when we don't feel like it. But when we have stood in front of others and said, this is what I want, this is what I stand for, this is my dream, this is my aspiration, and we have other people, A, cheering us on, yes, you can do it, B, hey, you said you were going to take that step, but you didn't, come on, take it next week, we are way more apt to do that. This is why, and many other reasons, we are creating circles, to give every one of you a place to have a group of cheerleaders who love you and support you in being the best you can be, who will hold you accountable a little bit and hold your feet to the fire in a loving way, but kind of kick you in the fanny if you need a little kick in the fanny in a loving way, to be there and celebrate with you when you stand in that commitment and shine your light in a greater way to be there for you. This is why we are bringing circles to CLF. And as Bobby said so beautifully, we don't want to be a community that has circles. We want to be a community that is circles. So that means every single one of you is in a circle. And I want you to go to the table after service today and read the application, read what we're asking of you, because it is a commitment. It's a commitment to your circle. It's a commitment to your spiritual growth. It's a commitment to be honest and and kind at the same time. Oh, there we go, right? Honest and kind, non-judgmental and authentic. It's an invitation to be all of those things. And as we are all of those things in the presence of others, and they are those things in the presence of us, magic occurs. And I want that magic for all of you. So your brain may be going, I don't have time for circles. I don't want to be. Mm-mm. You do have time. We always have time to do what we want, <laughs> don't we? I mean, really, come on. We may moan about not having time, but we make time for what we want. At least I do. So, yeah. So we have time. We, I really, 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 have I said it enough? I want you to go to that table and sign up for a circle. Now, a couple of weeks ago, she doesn't know I'm going to do this, but I hope she won't mind. Kathy Weber, who's sitting right there, I'm not calling you up. Don't worry. Don't freak out. <laughs> Gave a beautiful testimonial of why we have a pilot circle going on right now. And it's that row right there and a couple others who aren't, who aren't here today. But basically that row right there. Um, they're in a pilot circle. They wanted to, oh, there's a couple of, over on there. You guys are sitting over there. I'm, there you are. Um, and we had a few of them give a couple testimonials about being in their circle and what it means to them. And Kathy gave such a beautiful one. And I got a copy of it and I want to share it with you because some of you might not have heard it and, I, and I'm going to not give all of it but it speaks to what I've just said this is someone so just raise your hand Kathy so they know who you are that's that woman right these are her words all right we first guinea pigs have been in a CLF home circle since January we find it so rewarding to give and receive support we make the Sunday message ours in a personal way and often challenge each other to be accountable for what we say and do We are given a format for the evening and questions related to the theme of the previous Sundays and discuss them in a two-way setting. Yikes, she says. Now I am seen, known, and vulnerable by expressing my beliefs, fears, and challenges. I can't hide within a group of 10 very easily for very long. Am I able to accept and honor others as I want to be accepted and honored? Here's the big reveal. Allowing myself to be vulnerable has given me community, safety, support, and love. I have fallen in love with these folks. I have fallen into love. That's, thank you, Kathy, for those beautiful words. Give her a hand. That's what I want for every one of us. So that the stand that you're going to take in just a couple minutes You have people surrounding you, supporting you in this stand that you take. So what is this stand I'm going to ask you to take? Well, before I do that, I want to tell you why April 23rd, 2017, is an important Sunday for CLF. Because on Sunday, April 23rd, the Sunday after Easter, which is the same as today, 1995 was the very first gathering of this community. This is our anniversary today is our 22nd anniversary. So happy anniversary, CLF! In the first service, we honored our founding minister, uh, co-founding minister, Dr. Leonard Minx. He was here. We gave him 22 roses. 
uh, to honor him and also his birthday, his 94th birthday, which is tomorrow. Um, and uh, I have to tell you, though, it was very funny when we ordered the, the roses. So thank you, Sharon, for sh- Sharon. Um, uh, Thank you, Ireland gave me these beautiful roses from her garden to replenish the roses that we gave away to Leonard this morning. But when I uh, said to uh, Lonnie I was going to order Leonard 22 roses, he said, he's a guy. Men don't want roses. Why are you getting Leonard 22 roses? And I said, well, because I can't think, because I love roses and I want him to have them and so I'm going to give them to him. And then Kathy Peters, who brings Leonard to church, had an idea. She said, well, and I told Leonard this in service. I said, Leonard, if you don't care about roses, you're a guy. And he goes, yeah, you're right, I am. I don't care about roses. I said, well, here's the deal then. Kathy suggests that you have now 22 roses that you can give to 22 women who live in your retirement community. You will be the talk of the town at Greyhawk, right? So I think he liked that idea, and that's what... He's going to go do spread a little CLF love this afternoon out at, uh, (laughs) so 22 years, 22, if you look at numbers and the meaning of numbers, 22 is a very significant number, a very powerful number. It stands for master builder. 22 stands for taking lofty dreams and bringing them into reality. Isn't that, isn't that who we are? I just think that's so amazing. And here we are, 22 years of being a master builder, of helping people bring their lofty dreams into reality. And today, as we move now into our next 22 years, we are starting to build community in a new way, in a master way, as we build these communities. So how perfect that it all fell together today. I had no idea in my conscious mind that today, the day we would launch Circles was our 22nd anniversary. I did not put those two and two together, but God did. Spirit did. Source did. So this is what we're going to do on this 22nd anniversary of CLF. And by the way, the metal or the element for 22 is copper. So we're going to combine our 22nd anniversary, the element of copper, and and a stand that you get to make in an experience. And here's how it's going to go. You have in the pew pocket in front of you a card. I invite you to pull that card out right now. And if you're in the front row and you want a card, turn around. And You don't have cards. Well, well, we'll we have plenty of cards, I'm sure. So if you need a card, raise your hand and we will get cards. Looks like we had a, more people up front. In the, here, we got it. They're coming at you. Got a bunch up front. Thank you. Thank you. Perfect. All right. So what you're going to do in a minute, don't start anything yet, because I want to explain that we're going to just take a moment of meditative space to prepare us uh, for this. So this is how it's going to work. After we do our little meditation, you're going to fill out where do I stand in the, in the four areas that I spoke of already. And then once you finish completing your, your card, you're going to walk up to a station. We have three of them. This is like on the airlines. In front of you and behind you. <laughs> there are exits. In front of you and behind you. There are three. There's one station here, one in between, uh, kind of in the middle there, and then one all the way in the back. You're going to bring your card if you want so you can stand up here and read it to yourself. You're going to infuse your intention in copper. There are pennies up here. They're copper pennies. Uh, We're going to know they're copper. They may not be fully copper, but they're close to being copper, all right? So you're going to infuse your intention, your commitment, what you're taking a stand for in this penny as you stand here. Read it to yourself. Infuse this penny and then place the penny in the light. All right? And then go back to your seat and remain in the silence. Take your card with you. It's your card. You don't have to share that card with anybody. You don't have to share it. You don't have to share it with anybody. If you are in a circle, I would really encourage you to stand in your circle and share it with your circle. I would really encourage that. You don't have to. All right, so any questions about that before we move into it? So I want to make sure we get questions answered. So you're going to, in a moment, we'll do a little meditation. You'll write your answers down. You'll come up, take a penny, infuse that penny with your intentions that you stand for, place your penny in the light, go back to your seat. Yes? Yes. All right, so put your paper down for the moment. Put your pen down for the moment. Take a deep breath. Close your eyes. (sighs) Ah. 
And we're just going to do a moment or two of heart-brain coherence. And we do this by sending our attention to the space in our body where our heart lives. And if it serves you to help you keep your attention on that space, if it helps you do that by putting your hands on your heart, then do that. Just take your attention to the space where your physical heart lives. Your physical heart that has a very condensed but strong cluster of quote-unquote brain cells. They are in your heart. The biggest cluster other than actual brain. So we take the attention to this little brain that is our heart. And in that attention now, begin to simply slow down your breathing. Slower than you would normally breathe. And with your attention on your heart, with your breath slowed down, bring in to your heart, into your feelings as much as you possibly can, the feelings of care, compassion, appreciation, or gratitude. To the best of your ability, feel for the next few moments care, compassion, appreciation, or gratitude. And in this sweet space, I invite you to fill out your answers to these statements. I'll read them all and then give you some space to complete them. Regarding living the science of mind principles, I stand. Regarding my personal unique empowerment, coupled with the realization of my oneness with all, I stand. In my realization that I am a spiritual being having a human experience, and that through my creative nature I can experience health, harmony, peace, and prosperity in my life, I stand. And if I believe that love, sweet love, really is the answer, then I stand. Take the next few moments to write down where you stand in each of these areas. is very, very, very personal today. Have it be very meaningful for you. Take a stand.
whenever you're finished riding, you may go up to any station. You can have more than one person at a station at a time. space it, the one all the way in the back.
Ernest Holmes, in his Sermon by the Sea, said, Find me 1,000 people in the world who know what religious science is and use it and live it as it is, and I'll myself live to see a new world, a new heaven, and a new earth here. Let us join together in knowing that this activity that we have done here today, the stands that we have taken here today, do in fact bring forth a new heaven, a new world, and a new earth here and now. And so it is.